What's up everybody, Y Davis here, back with another review. So I'm gonna show you guys the Air Jordan 8 playoffs. All right guys, these officially came out today for a retail price of 210. And if you guys don't know the history behind this shoe, Jordan actually wore this shoe. And in my opinion, this is an instant classic, an instant cop, a must have in the collection if you missed out on it when you were younger. And this is the first time we're seeing this shoe in 10 year guys. Now we first seen this shoe in 1993 when Jordan faced the Suns against Charles Barkley. And as we all know, Charles Barkley is probably one of the greatest players without a ring, but Jordan stopped him from ever receiving one. And the other greatest player of all time, Allen Iverson, and we all know who stopped him, number eight. But let's get into it, guys. So this is the shoe right here. Now this is the box, it comes in a black box. It says Jordan on top. They go with a size 9.5 on these. You already know I doubled up on these. This is a shoe that I was not able to get when I was younger. I wasn't able to get in uh, 2007. I wasn't able to get in 2013, but today we finally have this shoe here, guys. Now open up the top of the box here. We don't get anything on the top of the box. We do get like this black plastic tissue paper on here, like a garbage bag type of field. Taking out this beautiful shoe right here, guys. And man, I'm just so happy to have these, man. Um, I mean, I remember this shoe coming out around Christmas time when I was younger, and it was just one of those shoes that I was not able to get. On the inside of the box here, we don't get the white and green sticker. But um, a lot of things to talk about today. This is actually my 800 or 801 upload. I just want to say thank you guys for all the support. Anybody that has been with me from the beginning, just thank you guys. If you left a comment, a like, subscribe to the channel, anything. I just want to say thank you guys. It means a lot to me. Um, Man, these shoes are just so fired. I can't stop looking at them. The first pair of Air Jordan 8s I ever had in my life was the Orange Blaze, I believe it's called. I remember waking my mom up early in the morning. It had to be about 5, 5.30 in the morning. We went to Hudson Mall in Jersey City, and I picked up those shoes. I just remember them saying, oh, this is the last size, and it was my size. I picked those shoes up, and I just was smelling them so much. That's, things like that just make me, you know, remember you know, these type of moments like the retro card, you know, Jordan Brand, yeah, I got to put that back on the inside of the shoes, man, especially a shoe like this that he wore. Give us the retro card, man. I mean, even if y'all don't want to upgrade the technology in the shoes and y'all going up 10 bucks on the price, give us a retro card, something at least. I reviewed a Air Max one the other day for 140. It had a dust bag. The materials on it was amazing. Jordan Brand, we know y'all can do it. Nike, we know y'all can do it. Add a retro card, add something back to the shoe. Give us a brand new smelling shoe again. They have a little bit of a good smell to it, but not like where if you just had it on your feet, you could smell it coming up from your, you know, from the ground. But uh, man, just good times. I remember about, you know, that orange blade shoe that I had. That was one of the first shoes I ever was taken care of too, because it was a white majority shoe and had the hits of orange. I just love that shoe. Man. I wore that shoe to the ground, bro. Like till you couldn't even wear it no more. <laughs> but uh, let's get into it, guys. So this is the shoe right here. I'm very happy to have this shoe. As you guys can see, and like I told you guys earlier, he did wear these in the 1993 playoffs and also won a championship in these. But let's get into it, guys. So this is a shoe, all black majority, and it's black suede right here. My friend actually did hit on the J Balvin 3s in Florida. I'll show you guys a clip of that real fast. So it was a dope environment, dope scenery that she uh, showed me how she was like, I could post it. I'll tag her right here so you guys can know uh, where to find her at. She does sell shoes if you guys are wondering in the tri-state area. But this is a shoe right here, guys. Now something different that I did notice about this shoe that I have not seen on you know, my other eights. And maybe this is something that is standard on the eights, but I don't remember my Air Jordan 8 uh, Orange Blaze having this. It kind of looks like he has an ankle monitor on. <laughs> if you guys look at the red right here, and I have three pairs of these, and it's on all of my pairs. So let me know if you guys are seeing that as well. And I got these all from different retailers today. But man, these shoes are just so clean. Let me know if you guys are copying these or dropping these. In my opinion, it's a must have because this is a classic. A shoe that he has worn. I mean, a lot of people may not know about the shoe because of all the hype things and whatnot, but. This morning, these actually sold out instantly, and the prices rose up to about 260 to 270 bucks. But before the launch, it was going for about almost retail $20 over. I was younger. I don't know if you guys remember this, but um, it used to be that you had to see this shoe in the glass to know it was coming out. Now, 
from my own experience, you know, I would see a shoe in the glass and be like, man, I want to get this shoe. I need this shoe. I got to figure out how I'm going to do good on a test and show it to my mom or, you know, I got to figure out how I'm going to get this shoe. That's how I used to always think. Now, today, we don't even see shoes on the inside of the glass a week or two early like we used to. And I don't know if that's because of social media, because of how it is so big nowadays. But being a consumer, that just made me feel like, you know, man, I want to have this man i gotta figure out how to work harder to achieve this and um i know today we're all about you know getting the shoe early and reviewing the shoe early just to say like hey i have it and things like that and i get it you know what i mean me being in this space now i understand a lot more why people make videos you know four or five videos on the same shoe i, I get it i know why you're doing it i get it um but me as a consumer you know it just feels like man like i want to have that you know what i mean and um, I don't know if you guys feel the same way about that, but for me, if it was in my reach, if it was something that I saw, um, it just made me, you know, want to have it more in person and rather than seeing it on the internet, if you know what I mean. So, yes, I did get that lust or did get that hype from seeing it, you know, on the BT Award or seeing it when somebody was doing like an interview or something like that, but um, it just felt a little bit more personal when I was able to see it in the glass, it being right there, window shopping, basically how 50 Cent calls it. But uh, let's get back into this video. Inside of the top of the shoe, which is black, but if you guys look at the OGs, or we would have this graffiti type of artwork on the outsides of the top of the shoe, but on this pair and on the last you know, two releases, we do get the black outlining towards the top of the ankle here, just in case you guys did not know that. But other than that, you know, when we do get retros, they do change something very, very slightly, but everything else does kind of look you know, original to true form. But let's look at the bottom of the shoe here, guys. So on the bottom of the shoe here, it is black, red, and like a bluish type of purple. All right. In the middle there, we get the same thing with a little bit of white. Looking at the midsole here, it is in black and like a metallic black with like some silver paint splatters on it. On both the outside and the inside of the shoe. Moving up a little bit higher than that, we do see some white, some black, and some red. Top of the shoe here, we get this nice suede all the way around the shoe. As you guys can see in this black right here. Now, if you guys wear these in rain or, you know, different type of weather conditions that is not sun, they will get messed up and dirty pretty easily. So, in my opinion, only wear these when you feel like you are going to be, you know, on a nice sunny day. You don't want to wear these on a day where the weather is bad outside. Same thing on the inside of the shoe here. I do see a little bit of glue stains on the inside of my shoe. These will collect a lot of dust as well. Looking at the toe box here, if you do not go true to size on these, nine times out of 10, you will have a big crease going across the front of your shoe. So if you guys need some wearable shoe trees, you guys can use my code of YDavis on creasebeast.com and save yourself five bucks. This is definitely one of those shoes that you want to put a crease protector in because these look crazy when they start creasing up and once you get that crease in them it's kind of hard to take out looking at the bottom of the mud guard here we get it in black we see a little bit of that blue slash purple creeping up from the bottom of the shoe all right now unfortunately we only do get one pair of laces in these and they come with the black laces if you guys look at the tongue here it's like a neoprene tongue on top of that we get these black straps with the 23 and like that bugs bunny font outlined in red and the inside is in white at the top here we get like this rubber material we have the jump man there in red okay we also do get this matte black on the clips that hold down the straps of the shoe. If you guys look towards the back on both the outside and the inside, it says Air Jordan. In my opinion, I think this is probably the best, if not in the top three of my favorite Air Jordan 8s ever. It'll probably be this one, Aquas, and then the Orange Blades because I actually had those shoes. Looking at the back of the shoes here though, we get some more of this black suede on the back of the shoe. All right, now you guys should see the dust that it is picking up already and I never even wore these yet. Inside of the shoe here, we do get some tissue inserts. Okay, once again, we do see this graffiti art on the inside and like red, white, black, and yellow. Okay, only on the tongue and on the insole. Basically only on the booty. Like I said, on the OG pair, it was all on the inside of the shoe. The production dates on this was 11-30-22 to 02 23 Give you guys a quick look at that real fast. They actually did give us the Nike Air on the inside and not the Jumpman logo, so I do like that. If you guys do look at this right here. All right, this isn't the Dream Cell insole, but it is the next best thing. This is the white on the background. Just as comfortable as the Dream Cell insoles, in my opinion. I'm not sure if they just don't put the name on this to say Dream Cell, but it does kind of feel the same, if you know what I mean. Underneath the actual insole, it is some cardboard in there. You can see some glue stains. Um, coming towards the back, we do get this red pull tab. And that's pretty much going to do it for this shoe, guys. All right. Now, I'm going to show you guys my foot is in the toe box right now. 
Okay, guys, so this is what they look like on feet. Pretty clean, in my opinion. Now, I'm a true size nine. I'm going to get nine and a half in all my shoes. I will say that this shoe is a true to size fitting shoe. But if you want a better wearing experience, go up half a size. You can possibly even go down half a size because Air Jordan 8s do run a little bit big, in my opinion. Now, with that being said, I will say that these do feel a little bit stiffer than I remember. Um, I'm sure you guys my foot is in the toe box right here. So my big toe is right here. And I do have a little bit of space on the top of the toe box. Now I do remember this leather or suede being a lot softer on the older pairs. On this one, it feels a lot more stiff. So, you know, I'm pretty sure it still will crease up as I'm showing you guys right here, but um, not as easy as the older pairs were. Um, I also do feel a little bit of stiffness and the materials on the outside of my foot right here. So this is my foot. As you guys can see, I don't have any room for error on the outside or on the inside right there. So if you have a wider foot or just want a little bit better of a wearing experience, go up half a size because like I'm showing you guys now, my foot does not have a lot of room in this toe box. This toe box is kind of snug, especially if you guys are trying to wear, you know, crease piece protection or anything to protect your shoes from creasing, go up half a size in my recommendation. So on the laced up pair, they feel really nice on feet, I will say. Like I said, I did go up half a size once again and I have no slippage on this shoe right here on the left. This is normally how I like to wear my shoes unlaced. And since this is a high top shoe and this shoe does have a booty, you know what I mean? These shoes do, you know, help your foot stay locked in, locked down. And they also do have these extra straps to do that as well. But other than that, they feel really nice on feet and Air Jordan 8s are one of the more comfortable Air Jordans in the lineup. And I'm gonna show you guys what these like some different pants options right now. Okay guys, so I hope you guys like this video. Make sure you guys like, comment, subscribe, show your boy some love. And